Okay, so I'm going to talk about physical therapy and Parkinson's disease. Um, just a show of hands, who has participated in physical therapy at this crowd? Okay, good. Wow, excellent. So you'll be familiar with some things I review. A little bit about me. My name is Karen. Um, I got my doctorate in physical therapy back in 2006. And part of my physical therapy doctoral program was to specialize in the topic. And I chose neuro neurological disorders. And I did a affiliation at the Adele Smithers Parkinson's Treatment Center out in Old Westbury, Long Island. So I exclusively treated Parkinson's patients and did a lot of research in the field um, to obtain my doctorate. And I've been treating patients ever since. So this presentation will include an overview of the effectiveness of exercise to treat PD, a review of exercise regimens, and then an overview of assistive devices that you can use. So is physical therapy effective to treat symptoms of Parkinson's disease? Yes. Studies show that people that receive personalized PT sessions as opposed to just doing home-based exercise alone have better outcomes. Studies show that people who receive personalized one-on-one -on -one PT sessions have better outcomes than group PT sessions. And then there's large amounts of research showing that several different types of exercise and wellness will improve the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So the research is there. Um, based on a review of 39 different trials, physical therapy compared to no intervention at all improved people's gait speed, endurance, freezing episodes, functional mobility, balance, and functional disability. So basically everything. Um, well, what type of exercise is the best? That's what I get a lot of questions on. And the fact is, is that there really is no golden standard. Um, there was a systematic review of 43 different trials and they couldn't find what was better than the other. Um, more studies have to be done to accurately compare the effectiveness of one form of exercise versus another when working with patients who have Parkinson's disease. So I tell my patients, pick an exercise that has been proven to be effective and something that you enjoy doing because motivation is key. Continuity is key. All of these studies that are out there, and there's well over a hundred of them, all of them show very positive short-term outcomes but not so much long-term outcomes. So for instance, if you're on a cycling program and you stop for a few months, you may lose the benefits that you gained right after you finished cycling. So what exercises will a physical therapist do with me? These are four main categories that you can expect. Aerobic activity, strength training, gait training, and balance training. So I want to review aerobic activity. When I treat my patients, I stress this more than anything. Aerobic activity has been shown in multiple trials to have an immediate positive effect on not only function, but balance and gait. So some aerobic activities that have been proven effective include treadmill training, that's full weight bearing or partial weight bearing, where you're actually unloaded by kind of a harness device on the treadmill. Tai Chi, like Dr. Silvance was talking about, has been proven for over a decade now to be effective. Walking programs, dancing, which also has an added plus of um, the rhythmic cueing has been seen to be beneficial as well. And then my personal favorite, because it's pretty low risk for injury, is cycling. Now, the regimen that's been proven effective is 45 minutes, three times a week at 80 to 90 RPM, so revolutions per minute. That's very intense cycling for anyone. Um, it's called forced exercise when you cycle or do any aerobic activity that is outside of your comfort zone. It's basically this study took place, the cycling study, and there was trainers and cycling instructors and they were saying, go, you could do this, push harder, push harder. That's forced exercise. <coughs> when you take someone and put them on a bike and say, do the bike for 20 minutes, get your heart rate going, that's not as effective as somebody really forcing you to push to your max. <coughs> so if you're not gonna join you know, a group cycling class or you know, go to a physical therapist just for the sheer fact of doing a cycling program, there's um, a cycle you could buy at home. It's, it's pricey for sure, but I wanted to throw it out there just to let you know there is something out there. 
It's called the TheraCycle, and it's a motorized bicycle that does assist you to exercise at a faster pace than you can do on your own. So it mimics forced exercise, which has been shown to be very effective. There's models for people that are wheelchair bound, people that just can't get out of a chair and transfer onto a bike. There's models that include arm and trunk motion, and you have ones that have adaptable seats and pedals. So there's a bunch of different types. A couple of my patients do have these at their homes and they do find it effective. So next thing we're gonna talk about is strength training. So a review of trials looking at progressive resistance exercise, which is what we would know as strength training, um, did show um, that people with mild to moderate forms of Parkinson's disease got stronger and they also had more walking endurance. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to improve function. So as far as being prescribed progress progressive resistance exercise, which is typically what we think of weight training, um, if you have mild to moderate form of Parkinson's and you want to improve, your main goal is to improve your gait capacity, that's what you should be doing. Another form of strength training, another program, I should say, that incorporates exercises that will make you stronger is something called LSVT Big. Has anyone heard of that here? You guys have. Okay, great. So it's, it's kind of like a weird name for PT because it's, it's called Lee Silverman Voice Treatment. And Lee Silverman just happened to be the name of the first patient who received voice therapy, where the goal was to encourage thinking big, thinking loud, exaggerating your typical motions and typical speech patterns. And Jara's going to talk more about this next. But um, so LSVT Big is really an intensive one-on-one -on -one treatment. It was created to help people with Parkinson's disease address gait, balance, and difficulties with activities of daily living. The main point is to recalibrate how you're perceiving your movements, because we all know that you feel that you're doing something on a normal scale, but it may appear to be smaller than the typical motion. Um, you know, your gait may be smaller strides, but you feel like you're walking completely normal. So this really works with the premise of thinking, I need to do bigger motions. I need to reach bigger. I need to reach higher. I um, put the website on the bottom just so you guys could look it up if you are not familiar with it. So it's a very intense regimen. The studies that showed this to be effective, the people were doing these exercises for one hour, four days in a row, four weeks in a row. So you kind of got to like separate a lot of time out of your day to perform these. On top of this, they were doing <laughs> daily home exercises, um, all with the premise of think big. So these are just a few of the exercises. A lot of them are done in chairs. So safety is, is good, I think, with this. I have done this exercise regimen with quite a few of my patients. Um, so for instance, you start in a position, you reach in a big way to in a direction, and then you end big with upright posture. And you repeat that several times. Okay, the next thing I wanna um, talk about just briefly is gait training. Um, gait training can be done on the treadmill effectively. So one of the studies that I thought was pretty interesting was treadmill training one hour, three days a week for anywhere between three to six months. Things that help these patients out, auditory cues, take longer strides, heel to toe, the addition of music, rhythmic cueing, and then also just verbal encouragement help these people to obtain safer, gait in the long term. Um, even up to six months after they stopped the gait training program, people were still seeing improvements in their gait. Balance training, and this is probably the number one thing my patients worry about is preventing falls. I want better balance. I don't feel safe anymore. So there was a fairly large study of 70 people who had Parkinson's disease performing four weeks of indoor balance training and four weeks of outdoor balance training, two hours per week, which is fairly attainable. And they were compared to a control group where it was just eight weeks of straight upper extremity exercises and both groups were given a home exercise program to do at home. Now at the completion and at a six month follow-up, there was significant improvements in balance as, uh, and a reduction in injurious falls, so falls that people said, yes, I hurt myself when I fall, not 
no big deal. I tripped and fell and I got right back up. Um, for the group that did the balance exercises, so a very positive outcome. Some of the exercises and training techniques that they use in this study and that you could actually do in physical therapy with your PT are multi-system postural control strategies, posture when you're sitting, posture when you're standing, posture when you're going sit to stand, um, stepping exercises, let's practice walking over and around obstacles, basic strength training, multitask training, floor transfers, let's get from the floor to a chair, um, walking with head turns, walking over various terrains. And now let's just talk about fall prevention in general. So through all my research over the past decade plus, there's never been a consensus saying exercise or any wellness activities really truly decrease your risk of falls. Maybe it's a lighter fall, but it's always a conflict. One study will say, yeah, the falls were decreased. The other study says, nope, it was the same as the placebo. So there was, um, you know, limited evidence saying that you will improve with exercise alone. So I always encourage my patients to live the safest lifestyle they can. How do you prevent falls at home? Assistive devices, like using a bench in the tub so you don't have to step over the edge. Using grab bars in the bathroom so you don't have to really put too much effort and body rocking into getting off the toilet. Safety with the wet floor in the shower. Raised toilet seats, giving yourself a little extra boost when you stand. Using gait assisted devices, such as the rollator, which you could also use as a chair if you become fatigued. Euro-style loft strand crutches, so you could still have your normal gait pattern with a normal swing, but you're using crutches for just more stability. Or a typical rolling walker, which I feel like many people don't get. You get it in the hospital, and then you use something a little bit less cumbersome in the long run, typically. You could also use canes. So for people that have freezing episodes as one of their major forms of disability, you could use a laser cane. The laser cane provides you um, an, a cue, a visual cue, to tell you, I need to advance my step to this point, and it's been proven to decrease the amount of freezing episodes while walking. Also, if you're just looking for a basic cane, this is my favorite the website, the hurricane.com on it. Um, it's a tripod base cane that accommodates all types of terrain by allowing 10 to 15 degrees of motion at the base of the cane. It also folds up so you don't need to hold it all the time. Comes with a wrist strap so you can not have it fall because that's the worst. You have a cane, you put it down, it falls, and then people now with bad balance are picking something up from the floor, which you definitely don't want to do. Um, and it has the arthritic grip, which I like. So what do you do now? You have all this knowledge and what's the next step? Well, you need to be medically cleared because just because you do have Parkinson's disease doesn't mean that you're able to exercise because you could have potential comorbidities. So make sure you're medically cleared. Um, you want to obtain a prescription for physical therapy and really all it needs to say on it is the diagnosis, the amount of times that you are recommended to go to physical therapy and the length of the prescription, which is up to, in the state of New York, up to 12 weeks before you really need another script. Um, find a physical therapist that has experience working with patients with Parkinson's disease. And if you don't, if you don't have luck finding one, at least bring them this PowerPoint with all these references. I referenced every name of the, um, the uh, primary um, investigator in all of the studies that I was referencing to you. And um, they could also do a quick Google search. And then arm yourself with knowledge. If you feel that you're getting told to do something that is harmful to you in any way, say, this has been shown to not be effective or this may be not the best use of our time together. Make each PT session as productive as possible. Keep on reading, stay motivated, because remember, you need to keep on exercising basically forever, which is beneficial in so many other ways. But Stay motivated and get support if you need it.